So apparently I got told that Jack Salvatore, who, by the way, I knew, was always Jack. And also he played Mark, right? On Zoe 101. And, you know, it was interesting because when people were tagging me in his recent Brave personal testimony about his experience working for Dan Schneider, I couldn't find his Instagram. <laughs> And I was like messaging people back being like, I don't see his Instagram. And then I realized when I found his Instagram that he was blocked. <laughs> so I guess when I was triggered and I saw him at the reunion, hanging out with specifically Dan Schneider, I blocked a lot of people during that time because obviously I was deeply upset. And so I unblocked him. And so I could also watch his reel where he talks about Dan Schneider bravely. And I was so surprised. You know, this is really, this is a really important point to make is that when survivors come forward, they encourage others to feel safe enough to come forward too. And that's why it's teamwork and it's team effort and it is a community. And that's why community is so powerful. But sadly, it does sometimes start with one person and then two people, right? And it, and it has this domino effect. And so it was really inspiring to hear Jack tell his story after watching Quiet on set. And I hope that goes for a lot of people after watching Quiet on set, that a lot of people feel supported and safe enough to come forward. So, um, because this is pretty wild. He says some serious allegations when it comes to Dan Schneider. And, you know, let's, let's get into it. Uh, I love how he starts it. Oh boy, what a week, y'all. Uh, let's talk about it. My name is Jack. I was a child actor on Zoe 101, one of this guy's shows. I also worked in his production department as an intern on iCarly, and I worked in the writer's room on Sam and Cat and Victorious. This Max documentary that was recently released did a really good job of uncovering the details of workplace toxicity, specifically on Dan Schneider's shows for Nickelodeon. We could talk about the massages. We could talk about the fact that he would literally count his gold coin collection in front of his crew who was living paycheck to paycheck. We could. Wait, I'm sorry. I have to actually pause here for one second. Dan Schneider has a gold coin collection. What other collections you got, Dan Schneider? I wasn't thinking gold coin. You know what I mean? Gold coin collection? in front of people who are living paycheck to paycheck, sounds like him, and also sounds like a lot of men and people in general like him in positions of power in Hollywood who treat their staff like don't pay them well enough and get money, like get rich off of them. About how sometimes he would bring out his to scare one of the writers when they were working at his house. We can talk whoa, about the high-level conversation. Like through that. scare one of the writers wait, 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 when they were working wait. in front of his crew who was living paycheck to paycheck. We can talk about how sometimes he would bring out his to scare one of the writers when they were working at his house. We can talk about the high-level conversations I wasn't supposed to... Wait, first of all, though, I, I, I love that I'm personally shocked first about the gold coin collection, and then you're like, Dan Schneider has a what? Like now I, now I feel actually a little bit even more afraid of Dan Schneider than I did originally. But that is so wild for him. Yeah, yeah, and uh, a shot, yep. Yep, 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 yep. This is who we were working with, children. So I guess writers were working at Dan Schneider's right. house and Dan Schneider brings out a shot, whatever, and scares one of his employees. And so we already heard in the documentary how he treated the female writers, right? The only two female writers. Now we're hearing a little bit more about what was happening when it came to the writers that were working for Dan Schneider. I mean, this is sick. This is absolutely terrifying. This is a serious allegation. And, you know, I believe it about the high-level conversations I wasn't supposed to hear about how Nickelodeon didn't want to recommend antidepressants for Jeanette McCurdy after her mom for fear that she might herself and make the network look bad. But what I do want to talk about is never letting this stuff happen again. This is an entire industry built on hope and dreams and adrenaline and wish fulfillment. And that can be a very dangerous thing for megalomaniacs to wield. Even in posting this, I'm a little afraid. Is this going to screw up my career moving forward? I have no idea, but I think it's important and it needs to be said. 
because of my silence ensures the perpetuation of environments I don't want to work in anymore, then what is the point of working in them? And until Homeboy goes on 60 Minutes to answer some questions from some real journalists and not a cast member of his who he's paying to be there, apology not accepted. Wait, wait. This is like, first of all, in just like a short reel, there is so much to process, to be quite honest. Because first of all, his comment about Jeanette McCurdy was extremely alarming. And this was about the network. And I can't say this enough. Nickelodeon, like Russell Hicks says, and Dan Schneider, approved of every single thing that Dan Schneider did while working for their network. Everything. So yes, we need to be extremely angry at Dan Schneider. And honestly, fuck that guy, right? But Nickelodeon, the pressure needs to be on Nickelodeon because I'm not just Nickelodeon, so many different studios, networks, record labels, all of it, institutions. They enable this behavior. They actually financially reward these individuals and make money off of this, these crimes, this horrific behavior. These institutions are making billions of dollars off of this type of treatment towards human beings. And there are sadly so many stories like this in the entertainment industry, but at least now, People are starting to see that Hollywood even treats kids that way. Yeah, yeah. Even children are treated this way. And I mean, if that doesn't make your blood, you know, boil, I don't know what will. But we have to stay focused also on the institutions, the networks that allow this behavior to perpetuate, to continue, to happen, to be covered up, to be protected. That's what we need to really also keep our main focus on because it's still happening today. And what he said after all of that, when he said that, you know, his silence, you know, however he, he, he wonderfully, honestly um, said it, it's true, sadly. The more of us that are silent around this, which is why they pay so much money to silence not only the survivors in this industry, but the bystanders as well. Because they know that our voices are powerful and they could force these institutions and these predators into accountability. And that's why they have even a little bit of room, not a little bit, actually a lot of room within their budgets to silence the survivors and the bystanders. I mean, this is part of budgets. There are budgets for silencing survivors and the bystanders. Not just at Nickelodeon, everywhere in Hollywood. And so we really need this change. The more of us speaking up, the more of us collectively putting pressure on them, we can create a safer environment for people within the entertainment industry. We really can. And it starts with listening to what the survivors have to say and then supporting them and boosting them and calling for action. And that's what we're kind of witnessing right now and it's a really beautiful time. So I just want to say to Jack, um, thank you. Power to survivors. Thank you for coming forward with your own personal story when it came to Dan Schneider. And um, if you ever want to reach out, um, I'm here. I messaged you and I uh, support you. So thank you so much for doing that. Let's actually one give more, him a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> round of applause for Jack. Jack, you're amazing. It's kind of surprising like how many people did not come forward. Let's go, Jack! <laughs> Cheers to Jack! Wait, Abby Wild. Every now and then, a thread pops on. Ask Reddit that invites users to share their hometown scandal. Wait, what is this? 
What is this? 9% of answers are about a teacher or a football coach or a youth pastor or some other trusted adult who turned out to have a dark side thread. I always think about how for every authority figure that turned out badly, there are probably kids who trusted them, who felt safe with them, who valued their opinion and their advocacy, who had important experiences and learned valuable lessons because of that person. Those kids get to go the rest of their lives knowing that something that was once light and shining and happy in their memory is now something they can't think of without suspicion. Did they on some level know? Were they complicit? Were they A-B-U-S-E-D? Were they just happy idiots? Did they willfully, willfully look past things they should have seen and flagged because believing everything was okay allowed them to have what they wanted? Are they themselves monsters because they owe so much gratitude to someone who is such a dark face? This is getting, what is this? This is, this is way too many questions, by the way. Sorry, no, no offense, Abby, but like, these are a lot of questions. Um, are they allowed to love their memories anymore or should all of that time be stricken from the record? Why don't you just think about this honestly alone for a minute? None of this compares to the suffering. Yeah, why? You just went through all of these questions and then you're like, nothing compares to the suffering of the victims. Of course. But, I don't like when people say but, but it's a dark place to be. Dealing with disillusionment about something significant to the way you perceive yourself and the way others perceive you. It's not an easy or safe thing to discuss with just anybody. Why are you on Twitter then? But also, hold on. So her having to process this, but at the same time, I'm like, literally not the time. Like, just say, I support everybody who came for it for now. And then you can get into all these questions to God. Abby, I, I, I'm wishing you the best, but at the same time, I'm just like, this is a lot. Um, to read all of this as somebody who is literally processing like actual harm from the person and the whole world knowing, I just wish you kind of went straight to um, that you support. Kind of like more Josh Peck. <laughs> Strangely, I can't believe I'm actually saying that, but how Josh Peck kind of went into it of just going right to it. Straight to the point. Well, yeah, you know what, though? I'm going to say something. Sorry, I'm a little, I'm feeling a little fiery spicy all of a sudden I'm feeling a little spicy all of a sudden you know why you support jack abby because there's a fucking four-part series documentary on hbo where the whole world supports jack you guys didn't support anyone before this point now it's popular opinion and that's why and that, that's another thing that i really hope that people leave this documentary understanding is do please, for the love of God, support survivors, even if everyone else is against them or if not believing them or not supporting them. Don't wait for somebody to support a survivor. Be the person supporting the survivor. Be the person supporting somebody that says that they were harmed. Please, for the love of God. I actually don't even, that pissed me off a little bit. I'm, I didn't even like that. You support Jack now because of the documentary. If Jack made that TikTok video, you guys were all with Dan Schneider in 2019 after I came forward about Dan Schneider, by the way. And you guys all hung out with him, laughing, drinking, eating dinner. I just got so angry. I lost it. I'm like, my brain's melting. It's 4.30 and I just lost it. Literally, I had to watch all of you. All of you. Laughing hanging out with Dan Schneider, wanting the reboot, kissing up to someone for your career. Get real. Get real. I'm glad you support Jack, and I think you should continue to support Jack. But I feel a certain way because of how you all treated people who came forward before this documentary, and I find it to be disappointing and a little bit hurtful, and I hope that you learn this lesson that when someone is coming forward about ABUSE, they're doing it because they wanna make sure people are safe. They're doing it so that no one else ever gets hurt the same way that they did. And that wasn't how I was personally treated. And so it little bums me out. Thank you for respecting our privacy during this time. I'd invite anyone who's interested to direct their attention instead to those who have chosen to share their stories Fine. which are more than enough tragedy for us all and which deserves our full attention. Thanks, Abby. 
but I'm glad that you're supporting now and I can only be grateful, right? We're always told survivors. Well, now that they are supportive, be grateful. And you're like, but I'm a little pissed though. <laughs> but I'm a little not down, you know what I mean? It's like, but I, but I, I appreciate and I'm kind of like, don't like it at the same time. But, you know, sometimes two things can exist, you know, at the same time.